Hi everyone, welcome to Mike's Mopar Garage. Uh, today we're in the shop and we're getting ready to start a pretty big project. I've been wanting to get going for a while. Uh, many of you know, if you've seen uh, my other videos, uh, one of the cars that I have is a uh, 73 Plymouth Satellite Sebring uh, survivor car. It's uh, basically a car I picked up out, out of Alabama a few years back. Uh, it's 40,000 miles on the car, a little over 40,000 little 318 car nothing special but what's really cool about it is that it's got uh, uh, what they call kind of a spring uh, spring special package interior it's kind of got the uh, uh, plaid interior inserts and a white interior uh, white uh, vinyl uh, seats and then it's also got the uh, maroon snakeskin patterned vinyl tops kind of cool uh, I bought this car just as a cruiser just something to enjoy have fun nothing that's going to be a hot rod or anything like that so my girlfriend and uh, G and I have been enjoying that car for quite a while. Back about eight months ago, nine months ago, um, we were driving it and went to turn around, uh, to turn a corner around at a red light, and the car just shut off like you just turned the key off, just instant stop. I uh, couldn't get it started. I uh, pulled the coil wire off and so forth, and I uh, had no spark. So I thought maybe the ignition module went bad, ballast resistance, something went bad in it. So I had a towed home. Went to check it out, um, still no spark. I pulled the distributor cap off and turned the car over and the rotor was not turning. So that let me know that there was probably something a little bit more serious. So um, when I, um, you know, it's either gonna be a camshaft broken, which I kind of highly doubt it, or timing chain. So um, I, st I started into the car. I went ahead and um, tore the front end of the part and lo and behold this is what i found so as you can see the um, timing chain came off uh, the gear and if you look really closely the gears are stripped and these are the old nylon tooth uh, gears that the early cars had and this has always been a big problem uh, so yeah that's the problem right there so as you can see, uh, we found the problem. It's just a uh, broken gear on the timing chain. Those early uh, cars had those nylon teeth on them. And even though the car only has 40,000 miles on it, it has 40 years on it. And that nylon gets uh, dried out and brittle. And that's what happened. It just uh, stripped off and uh, chewed the gear all up. Uh, Chrysler, along with some other manufacturers, thought in their wisdom of putting that nylon on it that it'd make it quieter. And, but uh, you know, as we all know, it just leads to more problems. So in diving into the car a little bit further, I went ahead and took the bottom, obviously took the oil pan off and it was full of junk, all the little particles. The oil pump pickup was completely full of stuff. And um, so birding had to be pretty extensive putting a new, I'm gonna put a new oil pump, new pickup, uh, clean the pickup out really good. Um, you know, obviously new, new uh, timing chain. But when driving this car, I, probably because the timing chain probably jumped a tooth and the timing was off, but this car really had no power. It's just kind of a, could hardly get out of its own way. So I decided uh, I was contemplating whether or not to, uh, you know, what to do with this. So I decided I was gonna, you know, while I had it apart, I was gonna go ahead and swap the camshaft in and put a little better cam in it than stock. Nothing dramatic, very, very mild, but barely above stock and maybe put a four barrel on it and just improve the drivability of it a little bit. So I bought a bunch of parts for it to do that. And then unfortunately I was involved in a hunting accident and I got hurt pretty bad. And I was laid up for about four or five months and couldn't do nothing, couldn't walk, couldn't do nothing. So in all that time when I was laid up, I've been kind of thinking. And I had earlier bought another motor possibly for this car. And it's a 360 motor. And here, let me show you that. So this is a 75 360 motor, four barrel car uh, motor. It's supposedly come out of a truck, um, I was told. I bought it from a buddy of mine here locally. He's a big Mopar guru guy. He's like a walking encyclopedia when it comes to numbers. And uh, he sold this to me. He got it from a guy, uh, said it was running when they took it out. And um, um, had the heads supposedly redone and stuff. But not really. I don't really care about that because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a complete rebuild. 
And this is what I've decided, final decision. This is what's going back into the car. So I'm gonna replace the 318 with this 360. I'm gonna go with a, a mild build on it, nothing spectacular, barely above stock on the cam specs, just to warm it up a little bit and just give it a little pep. Because the whole idea is I wanna be able to get in this car and drive it to California if I want to. And I want my girlfriend Gia to be able to get in it and drive it and not have any issues. Um, I want vacuum. Um, I want to have vacuum for the uh, brakes. I don't want to have any issues whatsoever uh, with drivability. So I'm going to just stick with a very mild build. Uh, so the other videos that I'm going to produce are going to be the steps I'm going to be uh, taking to and take you along for the ride, so to speak, on rebuilding this motor and putting it back into the Sebring. Just in case you guys forgot, there she is. And that's that maroon snakeskin cover or uh, uh, vinyl top, it's a little dusty and dirty, but if you can see, look at that, that's pretty cool. So this car is, uh, and then you can see the, uh, the snakeskin, or the uh, plaid seat covers, really awesome looking. Let's take that glare down a little bit. There, that's a little better. So she's dirty, been sitting here in the shop since I was hurt. Um, and couldn't get, couldn't walk and couldn't get out of the house. Uh, it got really dirty, so it needs to get a bath. But uh, this is it. This is the next uh, project. So uh, let's get back. Let's get into uh, some of the stuff of um, tearing it apart. See what we see. Well, we got the timing cover off, and uh, here's a surprise. This motor's obviously been apart before. It's got a double roller timing chain on it. So I wonder what other surprises are in this. This may be a better motor than I originally thought. Um, we're still taking it all apart and we're going to check everything first. But uh, somebody's put a little bit of money into this thing. They didn't just do a standard cheap, uh, uh, cheapo uh, rebuild. They actually spent a little bit of money on uh, some parts. So let's keep going and see what we find. All right, well, I got the intake and valve covers off. So the first thought is, is that, uh, yes, this motor has definitely been worked on. Um, it's a little dirty, um, a little in the spots, but obviously the heads have been worked. You can see where they painted on the inside of them. Um, the biggest other noticeable thing is that obviously they were in here because it's got a Mopar Performance camshaft in it. And it actually looks very good. I don't think there's very many miles on this camshaft at all. It looks really good. Um, so now, here's the big dilemma. It's a little dirty inside, a little sludgy. That's the one thing I noticed, that there's a little dirty in there. Not too awful bad, but uh, it's a little sludgy. So, here's the plan. I'm still going to disassemble this motor, even though it looks really good. And now I got some decisions to make. So here's the, here's the deal. I'm going to look up the number and the specifications on this camshaft. I'm going to pull it out and inspect it really good. So here's the dilemma. And here's the question a lot of people have on a used camshaft. Is this camshaft good enough to put right back in and use it um, once I find out the performance uh, specs on it? Um, it may save me some money on having to buy a camshaft. I already have a camshaft for this motor, but it's a very, very mild, barely above stock camshaft. Um, it's the one that I bought for the 318 motor, but it's also, it's a 318-360 camshaft. And from what I understand, it's just about what the spec, specs were for a stock 364 barrel engine were. Even though it's a little slightly hotter for a 318, it's actually a 364 barrel camshaft, or just actually slightly um, hotter than that. But I'm going to look up the specifications on this Mopar Performance one, and you can see the purple paint on there. And there's very little wear on those on the camshaft lobes. If you look at it, the camshaft lobes look really good. Of course, I'm going to pull it all the way out and look at every lobe, make sure there isn't one hidden that I can't see that's uh, maybe wiped or got a bad uh, got bad wear on it. But I'm going to take a look at that and. Uh, I'm going to do some little research on using, I've never used a used camshaft before, but I'm going to do a little research on it and see uh, what the feasibility on this. And I just may go back with this camshaft. Who knows, if I get a little extra performance out of it, if it's not too radical, yeah, 
I know it kind of goes against what I first said that I'm not going to go big with it, but uh, who knows if it's it might even be close to what I already have. So uh, I don't know. I got to I got to get pull the timing chain off, get the numbers off it, and we'll see. And I'll let you know. Okay, so I got the cylinder heads off. Here's this bank. All the cylinders look really good. There's no ridge on the on the cylinder wall itself, and uh, except they're carboned up, so it looks like uh, they were running kind of a wrong fuel mixture or something. It's just a lot of carbon, uh, but there's no uh, wear ridge on it whatsoever. Um, I don't see any stampings initially on the pistons to see if they're oversized, but I'm gonna I'm gonna clean them up and look a little bit better. Um, this side it looks really well as well. Looks really good as well. Again, they're just carboned up, but if you see, there's a ridge, just a carbon ridge at the top, but there's no uh, wear ridge um, that I can grab with a fingernail or anything. So again, uh, it's all looking pretty good. Um, here, let's take a look at the cylinder heads. So here's the cylinder heads. They all look pretty decent shape. I am going to take them all apart and clean them really good. And what I do for a living is I do what they call non-destructive testing. I do magnafluxing, dye penetrant tests, things like that in, on welds and so forth and power plants and uh, wall refineries. If, uh, if you guys look at my YouTube channel, you'll see I made a video on how to magnaflux and how to do a um, liquid penetrant uh, test on cylinder heads looking for cracks. So I'm actually going to do that on these just to double check it. That's what I do for a living. I'd be kind of stupid not to. I don't think they are, but it never hurts to check since I'm going this far anyways. Um, someone leave in a comment what they would think would lead to uh, that coloration on that valve. It's kind of a bizarre color on there. Not really sure, never seen one that color unless maybe there was some water in the cylinder and was burning, flashing in it or something. I'm not really sure what would cause that. Um, some of the other ones have kind of a similar discoloration, but not as not as much as that one. Um, so if you got an idea what that would be caused by, uh, let me know. It's kind of a curiosity. It's the exhaust valve. Um, and if I, um, so yeah, let me know. Something I forgot to mention uh, just a minute ago on these cylinder heads. So some of you may know already that 360s come with two different size intake ports, uh, intake valves, depending on what year. Uh, Pre-72 is uh, comes with 202 valves, and the uh, after that they're uh, 188 valves, uh, 1.88 inches in, uh, in diameter. So when I first pulled these off, I looked at them and I said, "Oh, it's got the bigger valves, so this must be the Pre-72 heads." And then uh, after checking, I got to looking. No, these are not. These are actually later model heads, probably with the same, uh, the block is a 75, so these are probably the stock heads for that 75 motor. However, somebody has paid and done the machine work to open up and put the larger 202 valves in it. So this is a kind of an added uh, bonus, a little surprise. So even though it's a 75 motor, and I was going to expect it to have the smaller valves, somebody has paid the money and opened it up. So. Uh, Yay for me, big bonus. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so I got all the pistons out and I measured the uh, rod journals and they appear to be standard size. So this crank does not appear to have been turned. Uh, something I did notice when I was tearing it apart is that it's very dirty inside. It doesn't look like the uh, guy changed the oil very often. Um, so it was real, the oil was just black. Also looked at the rod bearings uh, and themselves, and they were pretty worn. Um, I was surprised with the rest of the engine is showing not very much wear, and th this motor recently has been gone through uh, at one time or another. Um, the bearings were pretty worn, and I'm, I'm attributing that probably because the oil wasn't changed very often. So the next thing to do is can take the rod caps, uh, the main bearing caps off, and get the crank out and. Uh, Take a look at those, and then that should be uh, getting close to the end of the teardown. Okay, so I got the main bearing caps off, and 
Again, this uh, appears to be standard bearing sizes that don't look like it was uh, turned and molested with. Um, usually on the back side of the bearings, if they've been turned over, like 10 over, 10 over or, or whatever, they will match, they will stamp on the bearings that will be marked so that you know that that's an a undersized um, uh, or an oversized bearing with an undersized crank uh, been, where it's been ground and turned. But there was no markings like that on any of the bearings. Of course I'm going to get a micrometer and measure it all out a little bit more precise but I took a quick measurement and it looks like to be standard size. I'll get the machine shop to, to verify this for me because uh, regardless um, it looks like that the oil like I said was never changed very often and there are some scratches and and so forth. No grooves but just some uh, just you know just not polished so I'm going to get it looked at see if it could polish out if not I'll have to go uh, one undersized just to get it uh, nice and true and um, and then polished out but that's about it for the teardown so the next steps is get stuff off to the machine shop get it uh, cleaned up and uh, get a few more parts on order as soon as the machine shop just verifies what I already know but I want them just to double check that the bore size is same and that it's going to clean up well and there's no big scratches or cracks I'm going to magnaflux the block make sure there's no cracks in it and stuff uh, same with the heads and make sure that every, once I know everything's good um, then I'll know what parts to order and get a few more uh, get some parts on order coming this way and uh, we'll see about getting it put back together all right so that's about it well I appreciate it very much you guys uh, please if you like this uh, please like and subscribe uh, and you'll see the other videos you'll be you know when they, they get posted uh, and the other videos that get posted up and on the build and stuff so uh, so yeah, I appreciate it very much and like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.